Thank you for joining me. I'm Maya Lesov. My guest today is Daniel Hansen, who's an educator, philosopher, and activist in the fields of environmental sustainability and system science. Environmental, in this case, meant more literally than usual, as in encompassing the environment of a given system, including of the Earth itself. I spoke to Daniel in July of 2012. Thank you for joining me, Daniel, and welcome. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. So um, explain to me uh, what your research has entailed in system science and in, in environmental systems study and why you're interested in that field. That's a very academic question to begin with, huh? Well, okay. I just contextualize your... Yes. Well, uh, first of all, my main interest in systems is applied to sustainability. So I'm only interested in the theoretical parts insofar as this can help us understand complexity in the real world. So that is basically how I got interested in these things applied to education. So I mainly see myself as an educator, at least at this point. So your uh, approach is practical. You want to use a theoretical systems study to apply it to educational, the educational paradigm we live in today in the United States. Uh, yes. Well, as I see it, sustainability is requiring a systemic approach rather than just bits and pieces. So I try to incorporate a non-reductionistic approach and I also fall back on classical philosophy and all kinds of things to provide a transdisciplinary scope, as I call it, where we do not see disciplines as something that is real, but rather artificial boundaries. And we need to really get out of those boxes and understand problem solving in the real world. So that is where my interest in systems comes from. And what is the relationship then between education, educating students a certain way, and the sustainability of the planet? Explain that relationship. Well, um, if we are to understand sustainability and educate the next generation in the right way to understand these problems and understand all the complexity involved, we need to look at things from a systemic angle. But a lot of the theoretical underpinnings of system science and so forth has come from the reductionistic side of things, where it's all about building better things and basically using nature for our own needs in more efficient ways. So now people are looking at systems thinking and so forth in various ways to apply it to sustainability, but many times they miss the transdisciplinary part. So I'm interested in applying systems methodology and various systems theories to transdisciplinary education because as I see it, we need those things to understand various compartmentalized or various parts of this larger wicked kind of problem situation. But we also need this larger transdisciplinary scope. So I don't really understand if I, if I got your question right, but that's where I'm coming from as an educator. So I... What you're saying is people can't be prepared to tackle uh, systems problems in the real world if they don't, if they are not trained in the systems problem solving in school. Yes. Well, the education we have today for children of, on all levels is very fragmented. And we basically teach children to not understand the real world as it is, but rather understand what others have said about the real world. And we don't really teach children to understand the creative possibilities of how to perceive and how to pursue real problem solving. So. I try to make a contribution in that regard to sustainable problem solving. So tell me what problems this causes when students aren't taught in this way. Well, if they are not being given a transdisciplinary approach from the beginning, so to speak, then somebody will need to come in later on and tell them that a lot of stuff they have learned is wrong, or at least very limited. So we need to integrate this into education on all levels. But before that can actually be done, I think we need other kind of approaches in courses and various programs that can kind of help us alleviate some of the problems that have come from this lack. So I try to design courses and hopefully also programs eventually that incorporate systems thinking and transdisciplinarity in a more organic way. And my hope is that this will become a breeding ground or a kind of laboratory for how this can well, start becoming something more systemic rather than just a patch 
to compensate for the larger problem, so to speak. From more from the ground up. Yes. What kind of response have you received to the courses you've taught and the papers you've written? Well, students just love this. Many times I hear that students respond with something that is almost like a religious kind of sentiment that they say, wow, this is opening up all kinds of possibilities and it explains so much about how the real world functions. And they are also very surprised because they start to see that a lot of things they have learned from other places and other courses, these things are very limited in scope and they don't really put things in context. So what I see is that students that come from various design-related fields and planning and also environmental science, they say that these kinds of courses that I teach provide a missing kind of scope, a missing perspective that unifies many other things they have learned. And they said, I wish that I would have taken this kind of course early on in my education. That is a very common thing I hear. Uh, let's get specific a little bit so that we can understand what the difference is about what you're teaching and what these other more limited courses are teaching. What it is that, what is it that's in the content of your course work? Well, a lot of courses that teach sustainability in various forms, these courses tend to become multidisciplinary in the sense that they provide a kind of sampler of all kinds of areas and they tell you that these things are relevant and we need to basically involve all these different areas. But most of the time, courses and programs do not really provide the integration. So this is left to the student to start making sense of how these things really fit together and why these things matter in context. So the functional awareness of how these parts are supposed to be made into a larger whole, this tends to be missing, unfortunately. So I try to steer clear of the fragmentation that presupposes that these bits and pieces are supposed to be disjointed to begin with. So that's why we start talking about classical philosophy and how we actually perceive the world and how we perceive ourselves in relation to the world and in relation to each other. So based on that, I basically start introducing other areas that are relevant to know about to understand sustainability. But I always start with the individual and how we see because that's where it begins. And that's where children are many times being, I mean, taught. They are they learn how to unlearn to see things in the way how the real world is, organized in all of its complexity and, and all of its majesty, actually. It sounds like you think that young children are predisposed to not think in a compartmentalized way. Very much so, yes. I struggled with this for many years. I was thinking, well, are we genetically or biologically predisposed to be reductionistic or something like that? And people talk about selfish genes and they talk about all kinds of things and evolutionary selection and all this. But you also see that organisms derive benefits from being communities. And this is something that many times tends to be overlooked. But we have basically become conditioned culturally. That was the conclusion I arrived at when I looked at this. Because I also see that in the Eastern cultures, in Eastern religions and so forth, there is a very different view of the world. And that is also where Spinoza comes in into the picture, into my teaching this, because I recognize that Spinoza, this philosopher from the 1600s, basically provided this scope in his way of explaining the world. 